Nadine, thank you so much for sharing your gifts. We get, uh, we get the joy of that uh, at least once a year, sometimes more than that, and we're very grateful to you. And they will also be playing the postlude. So I know how all of you want to jump up and get to the restaurants and beat the Baptists there, but I... <laughs> But I would encourage you. I would encourage you to stay and uh, uh, after the uh, after the benediction and after the words for mission and after the whatever else we do at the end, uh, that that you would just sit down and uh, be able to listen uh, listen to them play again and share their gifts. So again, thank you. I call your attention to announcements. Take a look at all the different things going on in our church, and uh, continue to lift up in prayer the work of our congregation as well as the leadership of our congregation. I want to uh, especially lift up two things. Uh, one is that June 2nd is our ONA celebration and we will be in here, but then June 9th we will be transitioning over into Smith Hall uh, for the rest of the uh, summer season. We'll be doing that uh, through the rest of June and then the first two weeks in August and then the third week in August, we'll be back here. I don't expect you to remember all that. I just want you to know that I told you, and uh, I will remind you again. Uh, so we'll be having uh, those transitions. And then for our ONA celebration, uh, we have uh, several things that are planned. Among those is that Reverend David Reagan will be coming back and will be uh, sharing some of his perspective about the ONA celebration, our 20th anniversary of that. We look forward to him being a part of that. And there will be uh, uh, lots of music and just lots for us to, to feel blessed and to celebrate and also to hear a word of challenge about what the state of play is or what the state of LGBT rights are in the valley and the work that is yet to be done. So we'll be doing that next week. And also next week then, I call upon Herb uh, to make an invitation for food. Or, or, because I, I made the mistake of calling it a potluck. It's not a potluck. It's not a potluck. What, it, what is it, Herb? No, you need to get to a microphone. I'm sorry. You, you, no, we need, we need you to a microphone. You don't think these microphones will amplify my voice? I, I don't know. Does it, do those microphones work for a speaker, Brian? They do? Oh, there you go. Have at it. Okay. Well, uh, I just want to check one thing with you. You encourage everybody to stay to listen to the postlude music. And then did you invite us to go to restaurants? And beat Baptists? Yes. <laughs> I did say beat the Baptists, didn't I? Yes, you did. You did. You did. That's, that's not quite what I meant. Okay. Well, I, just, right. I just wanted to double check. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Next Sunday, skip breakfast. Trust me. Skip <laughs> breakfast. Mike and Bert Ruby have planned this incredible <coughs> feast to celebrate 20 years of Shatter Rock observing being O and A, open and affirming. And I can't believe there was ever a time that Shatter Rock didn't say, you are welcome here to all people. But apparently that was one of the transitions that was made and we wanna celebrate that. And the feast is gonna be phenomenal. Now we're gonna have all sorts of barbecued meats and there's going to be a wide variety of food for vegetarians. And we're even going to be featuring foods for those who have to eat gluten-free. So everybody is going to be included in the feast. We're expecting special guests. And as a result, Bert has organized all these folks to make their specialty foods to please everybody. It's not a potluck. You don't need to bring anything special. But if you would like to participate, you might want to join in on the line and give other people food. And that way you can follow Shatter Rock's most sacred phrase of loving and serving all. All right. Thank you, Herb. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Okay. All right. I invite you to take a deep breath. that we can center ourselves 
that we create this sacred time together, knowing that the spirit of life and love moves among us, that the great desire of God is to speak the word that you need to hear the most, be it a word of challenge or a word of healing, a word of comfort, a word of grace. May that word come to you. And through all of that, may you know that you are loved. And no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I invite you to stand and let's sing. It's like, you are loved. Now we're going to sing about a hammer. Okay, here we go. Thank you. <laughs> Good job. Good job, Van. Thanks. Our wisdom reading comes from the prophet Jeremiah. And um, it was interesting that yesterday, uh, our, the Boy Scout troop that has started to meet here at Shadow Rock, they participate in a event at the National Memorial Cemetery in Cave Creek. At the National Memorial Cemetery, there are over 43,000 grave markers. And the scouts from all over the valley come together at 6.30 in the morning. And they then, at 7 o'clock, they proceed, they spread out over the whole cemetery. And in less than 30 minutes, every one of those markers have uh, had a, a flag has been planted. And so it's an amazing work. It's an amazing thing to see. And um, I appreciated the invitation to be a part of that. And, um, and then, of course, for next year, uh, those of you who would like to join our scout troop in that event, uh, that invitation will be made to you, and you can be a part of that. So we're grateful to them. And so this is kind of uh, an image here, um, you know, in terms of children uh, pouring out into the street. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is talking about an image of war and, and not in uh, the best ways. But um, as we have a comprehensive view of life and on this Memorial Day weekend, our thoughts 
go in this way. Pour it out on the children in the street and on the young men gathered together. Both husband and wife will be caught in it. And the old, those weighed down with years, their houses will be turned over to others together with their fields and their wives when I stretch out my hand against those who live in the land. From the least to the greatest, all are greedy for gain. Prophets and priests alike, they all practice deceit. They dress the wound of my people as though it were not serious. Peace, peace, they say, when there is no peace. Are they ashamed of their detestable conduct? No. They have no shame at all. They do not even know how to blush. (laughs) So, they will fall among the fallen. They will be brought down when I punish them, says the Lord. But there is a word of hope. This is what the Lord says. People of God, people of faith, people of conscience, stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths of wisdom. Ask where the good way is and walk in it. And you will find rest for your souls. Kathy. Please pray with us. We are always part of the other, and the other is part of ourself, for nothing is as simple as it seems. An oppressor dwells in each victim, and oppressors have victims within for nothing is as simple as it seems. In the light remains hidden darkness. In the darkness remains rays of light, for nothing is as simple as it seems. In our joy remains buried sorrow. In our sorrow there still lives the joy, for nothing is as simple as it seems. In each puzzle lie all the answers. In each answer, a puzzle remains. For nothing is as simple as it seems. All the many contain the one way. In that way, all the others reside. For nothing is as simple as it seems. All beginnings lead to their endings. From all endings, beginnings emerge. Yes, nothing is as simple as it seems, so let's worship life's woven patterns through embracing all life's sacred grace, the mystery on which every heart can feed. A couple of years ago, I wrote uh, a letter uh, to my dad, who served uh, my my biological father, as well as my stepfather, who became my adopting father. And uh, I shared it several years ago. I I've rewrote it somewhat. I was I was uh, again moved in the action yesterday with thousands of scouts moving across the the National Cemetery. 
And uh, I don't know if you all know this about me, but, but I'm fairly liberal. Do you, did you? <laughs> okay, I, just so you know. Uh, but um, I, would, I would knock anybody upside the head that would question my patriotism. Okay? I'm not a nationalist, but I am a patriot. And so uh, I share this letter with some changes, but I share this letter again. To my dads who served, I want to thank you for your service in the U.S. Army and the U.S. Air Force of our nation. Dad, when you went into the Air Force, you went as a young man to get away from the declining steel mills of Allentown, Pennsylvania. You were already a hard worker. During your childhood summers, you would live with your Uncle Howard and help him on the farm. You started digging graves in the Lutheran Cemetery when you were five years old. When the drill sergeant would burst into the dormitory and yell at everyone to get up, get showers, get dressed, and be in formation in five minutes because everyone is burning daylight and it is no one's birthday today, it mostly felt like an extension of your civilian life. You thrived on the discipline and you brought with you a deep respect uh, for authority. You learned how to fix the latest aircraft and lead groups of people as you rose through the ranks to become a sergeant. You wore the uniform with pride. In fact, you kept the uniform with all the insignia and the badges pressed and protected with a plastic bag and hanging in the hall closet of our home. After all, one never knew when their country might need them to serve again. It is important to go on with our lives, but it is also important to be ready. Your active duty ended in the early 60s and you were part of the reserves when I first met you as a little boy and lived, that lived across the street. You were fun, kind, and served the best bachelor salted buttered noodles I had ever had. Over time, you became my stepfather, and then you adopted me as your own, and I became a Heinzelman. Being your first son, the oldest, and being plopped into your life and inheriting the role of fatherhood without the benefits of infancy, I think you tried to fill in the gaps with your military experience. So every Saturday morning was drill sergeant morning. There were cars to fix, yards to care for, sawdust and streets to be swept, gardens to be tended, rocks to be picked, tools to fetch, and of course, daylight was burning and not to be wasted. You are who you are. And you are mostly who you are before the Air Force, but military service taught you many things, gave you opportunities, and solidified much of your character. For who you are and the way the Air Force helped form you, I am grateful. The Bible speaks of training up a child in the ways of the Lord, and so you passed on many great qualities to me, which have served me and my family well. I want to say thank you to my father who served in the Army. You were 27 years old when you were drafted to go to Vietnam. You had already left mom and I to be ourselves when I was too young to remember. I have a handful of memories of you, but knew nothing of you. Being drafted to serve in Vietnam made certain that you would not be a part of my life for many years. When finally reconnected, when I had a wife and family of my own, it was then that I learned that you were a carpenter assigned to a mobile army surgical hospital, a MASH unit. As you shared very little of that experience with me, I started filling in the blanks with scenes from the TV show MASH. I imagined you pu putting up the structures as the unit moved from place to place. I imagined you carrying stretchers of wounded and dead soldiers. You were not skilled in any of the medical services, so you did a lot of the grunt work. 
Your charm was being easygoing and making others laugh. I imagine that in between the deluge of blood and the cacophony of cries of pain, your gifts were needed and appreciated. Mom and your sister said everybody liked you. I got the impression that in some ways you did not belong in this world. Life was too mean, too demanding for someone like you. So, you endeared people to you as you mostly drifted through life. Maybe being laid back and drifting through life was the way you wore before you went to Vietnam. Maybe being laid back and drifting through life is a post-traumatic stress reaction to what you experienced. The total number of soldiers deployed to Vietnam was 536,100. The total number of wounded was 303,644. The total number of deaths was 58,220. How many of these did you witness? You did not die in Vietnam. There's much I did not know about you. I missed your life. I missed your death. I missed seeing your body laying in a casket. Our hello when we reconnected was awkward and our goodbye was non-existent. You did not die in Vietnam, but I wonder if something of yourself died or got left behind. I have more questions than answers. Nonetheless, if not as a son, as a citizen, I say thank you. I shared these stories on Memorial Day weekend for several reasons. One, it is right to express gratitude to those who served. Two, it is right to acknowledge the complicated dynamics of military service and the ways which service gives and takes and shapes not only the lives of the women and men who serve, but the lives of the people who love the women and the men who serve. Three, it is right to honor all such service to our nation, and this includes those who serve as first responders. Four, it is right to give extra acknowledgement to those who served in the extreme and gave the most by losing their lives in such service. At the Arlington National Cemetery is the Confederate Memorial. On the north side of the memorial is carved the inscription written by Dr. Randolph Harrison McKim, who went from the ranks of the Confederate Army into the ministry and was the rector of Epiphany Church in Washington, D.C. for 32 years. The inscription reads, quote, not for fame or reward, not for place or for rank, not lured by ambition or goaded by necess necessity, but in simple obedience to duty, as they understood it, these people suffered all, sacrificed all, dared all, and died. Obedience to duty, as they understood it. I do not always agree with everybody's understanding about what that means, but I will respect a person's obedience to duty. It is complicated, and it deserves more than wrapping ourselves up in the flag and creating warm fuzzies for ourselves by offering the appropriate rhetoric. We will have parades, family gatherings, and special sale events at Toyota and Dillard's. However, our faith tradition gives us another word. I hate 
I despise your festivals. And I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. It is justice. We stand at the crossroads and look. We remember the old ways, the pathways of justice. And from there we create a future together. Love and respect for veterans is not matched by our national actions. Veterans' health care and post-war benefits and support to families are cut and decreased. This is not unique to Republican or Democratic administrations or liberal or conservative houses of Congress. We, the people, are responsible because these government entities are our government entities. And let us not shake our heads in disgust because we think all government is bad and ineffective. Even if this simplistic analysis was true, where is the private sector's response to fill in the gaps in the face of record profits? This system has been broken for a long time and we, the people, are ultimately responsible. We have condoned more wars and created more wounded veterans than we are willing to care for. I have said for many years that I pray that the political leaders who send people into harm's way would be as honorable as the people who serve in harm's way. And I am still having to say this. You know, veterans have marched on Washington, D.C. in the name of justice before. Remember the bonus march? And I would say if they do so again, we should be right there beside them. Paul Rykoff, founder and CEO of Iran and Afghanistan Veterans Affair, says... If we can't get this right, then we can't get anything right. I would call attention to the current rhetoric building up tension, saber rattling with Iran. We have been here before. And the wounded and the dying that went to serve honorably went when political decisions were not honorable. We are responsible because we are the people. I recommend you go to charitywatch.org and see which veteran organizations are rated the best for integrity. Make a donation. Volunteer at the VA hospital. Join the scouts on the Saturday before Memorial Day and plant flags and be moved to tears. When you see a veteran with their family, go to them and thank them, the veteran and the family but also call, write, email your representatives and senators that we are not fooled again and that the most marginalized people in our society are not victims again. That is how we honor our troops. That's how we honor them. Amen.
Would you join me in this day of the poppies that symbolize our remembering? <clears throat> we pray that we may learn to love one another. God, hear our prayer. We remember those who have loved us enough to lay down their lives for us and pray that they may rest in peace. God, hear our prayer. We pray that you would comfort all those who mourn the loss in war of a loved one. God, hear our prayer. We pray that we may never take the freedoms we have for granted and will share them with others. God, hear our prayer. We pray that you will remove greed, envy, and lust for power and control from our hearts and the hearts of all people. God, hear our prayer. We pray that you will root out racism, sexism, and violence from our lives, our communities, our nation, and our world. God, hear our prayer. We pray that we may learn to share the world's resources with all and not hoard them for ourselves. God, hear our prayer. We pray that we may learn to wage peace so that no more people will die in war. God, hear our prayer. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, the Christed one, trusting in the promise that whatever we ask in their name, you will give. Amen. I want to tell you a little something about Jackson Berkey. He was the co-founder of the Monheim Steamroller. And uh, he is also a wonderful composer of many piano works, lots of choral works. And he actually was here many years ago with his wife. And I'm assuming that they performed here in Shadow Rock Church. So um, he actually, I invited him to come to UMass Amherst, where I teach. And he did a wonderful residency there of a couple of months ago. He played on a recital of mine, a marvelous two piano work, and, uh, and also his own couple of his nocturnes. And uh, so I'm happy to share this particular nocturne. He was working with all of my students who learned many of them. There are 24 nocturnes, just like J.S. Bach uh, wrote all the preludes and fugues, and so he has written one in each key. So I hope you enjoy this uh, offering from Jackson Berkey.
Nadine, thank you. That was beautiful. Is that noise happening when I walk? No? Okay. Is it happening when I breathe? <laughs> All right. Nadine again, thank you. That was beautiful. Well, this is the time in our service when we lift up the celebrations of our lives. That is, it can be a birthday, it can be an anniversary. These uh, rites of passage for us uh, are so important when we take stock of what's going on in our life and measurement of all the good things and the love in our life. But perhaps it's none of those things. It's not a birthday or an anniversary or a rite of passage. Perhaps you were surprised by someone being kind to you or you had an opportunity to be kind to someone else. When such grace breaks through in, in the world and through you, that is a celebration as well. So if you have a celebration, I invite you to stand so that an usher can come to you with a microphone, and that way we can all share it. So here we go. Bert. Believe only half of what Herb said, <laughs> <laughs> or less. Um, I just want to emphasize again that next week is really going to be a big celebration. And as we look back, 20 years back, and then forward, we begin to realize having a vote on ONA was a really big thing. And so Lorena and I are very grateful because our paths have been very different because of be having been here. But it's not just us. It's about other people, too. If we look, as our motto says, intentionally towards the future, there are a lot of future things we need to be looking at as well. Justice work is not yet done. And we think also of the sanctuary families and the people seeking asylum. We have much work to do. But what I wanted to say, come, just come and eat and enjoy the celebration. It's a great celebration. Thank you, Bert. Thank you. It's a good word. Ann. I'm Ann Eicher, and my husband is in the sound booth, so it's safe to uh, make a celebration for him because he can't reach me and take the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. Uh, but he retired on the 15th. Oh, congratulations. Good for you. Good for you. All right. K Karen. Good morning, everybody. Um, I always have, I think, things to celebrate. But today, it's baby Charlie's birthday. My sister's brand new baby is like three hours old. Um, and so he's here a little early, but everybody is good. So I'm celebrating Charles Kelly Wilkins this morning. Yeah. Wonderful. Great. Thank you. All right. Okay, Dewey. Hi. Dewey and Sharon Ray Tuesday, we celebrate our 24th anniversary. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. Okay, John. Uh, one thing I've noticed on our bulletin, those are M16s from the Vietnam War that you were talking about. And when this was first tested in Vietnam, the special forces using it loved them. And then our military and their brilliance made about three changes to it, put the wrong kind of powder in it. It became a liability for the soldiers and caused a lot of men to die. So the other part in the bulletin talking about speaking to authority yes. and challenging things is so important in terms of results in life. And on this Memorial Day, I, I honor many of our relatives. I had Memorial Day came about because of the Civil War. My wife and I both had relatives fighting in the Civil War on different sides. One went with Sherman through the South, 2,000 miles and 22 battles. Our fathers both served in World War II. Our father in the infantry in Italy, which had very brutal, uh, bloody fighting in World War II. My father went from Normandy. He started out in England, went from Normandy through France and Belgium and Germany, all the way to Berlin in the medical corps. 
In World War II, we lost over 300,000 men and probably in excess of a half a million people injured. I don't know how many it was, but war is a really tough thing, and I, you know, I'm really concerned about what's happening right now in our country. But I celebrate their lives. My father uh, died 10 years ago this week. Uh, he, this week, he would have been 100 years old. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Karen. Karen Dritzis, and I am celebrating my son, Mark. He turned 48 last week, and he is living in Flagstaff now as a manager at Grimaldi's Restaurant and having the time of his life. Wonderful. Good. Cindy Gatorna, standing up on behalf of a Stepping Stone Foundation. About 30 years ago, this church birthed a Stepping Stone Foundation out of its Justice Ministries. Often I stand up to tell you how many of our former preschoolers have graduated college and high school, which is the case, but today I would just like to celebrate 40 more preschoolers went through our program and were done for the season. Wonderful. Thank you for your work. Thank you. June, June Miner, uh, I just want to give you an update on my son. He successfully went through his heart surgery, but his body is full of water and they don't know how to get rid of it. Uh, he has a rash on his leg, and hopefully he gets into the hospital today to see if he can get an antibiotic or something. Also, my youngest son's wife is having a lumpectomy on Tuesday. Um, they have found some um, disturbing um, lumps in her breast, so uh, if you think of her in prayer. June, thank you for letting us know so we can add our prayers to yours. Thank you for that. Jim. Jim Gear, and uh, I apologize ahead of time for having a bunch of things. Uh, first off, I would like to say thank you, Ken, and amen to what you said. That was a very moving uh, tribute, so thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, you're welcome. And uh, I've got a family that has a lot of military history, not the leaders, the generals and admirals and things, grandfather that um, suffered through Andersonville prison in uh, the Civil War, and uh, uncles that died in World War II in France, and a uh, brother who suffered the effects of Vietnam, among others, uh, just lots of them, so I want to remember them. And uh, I also want to... Um, mention uh, that uh, um, I've had a cousin and a brother-in-law both in the bulletin at different times over the past year. Uh, my cousin recently went in, um, he was gonna have a knee transplant and they decided he had to have some cardiac checkup before he did that and uh, found that the uh, main artery in his heart was 100% blocked. He's a weightlifter uh, and lifts every day of the week. Um, somehow his heart developed collateral uh, linkages around um, the blockages over time, and that one was okay, but he had two others that were about 90%, and I'm celebrating the fact that he's okay. And then my brother-in-law, Norm, who had uh, uh, colon cancer, um, now has discovered that uh, um, he has some more hot spots and uh, will be going through another at least six months. Uh, um, the good news is that they found it really early. They're just spots. The uh, unsettling part is that uh, um, he, the, the cancer itself has mutated and they're not quite sure how to deal with it. So he'll be uh, dealing with that. So if you keep uh, him in your thoughts, I would appreciate that's Reverend Norm Bouchard. And uh, finally, I've got good news. I went in again yesterday. A year ago, I had two stents put in my heart and went in, they wanted to do a checkup because I had a third one they weren't sure about and went in and everything's good to go. And he said, I can do anything. Hey, good. Thank you for that. All right. All these celebrations and uh, 
all the incredible gifts around us. And life, when we stop and really think about it, it's really deep and it's complicated and it's beautiful and it's a gift. And so that's why, uh, that's why we share, that's why we gather, and that's why we sing. So, thank you. Oh, I'm, yeah. Your daughter Michelle's birthday is tomorrow. All right, very good. One last one. All right, let's sing. give these gifts as an act of celebration and we celebrate our own new life and the worldwide proclamation of the good news to all people everywhere. When Johnny comes marching home again, hurrah! We'll give him a hearty welcome then. Hurrah, hurrah. Oh, the men will cheer, the boys will shout, the ladies, they will all turn out, and we'll all sing again when Johnny comes marching home. Now, we know that version of the song. Uh, what we may not know is that that is actually a revised version. The original version is actually an anti-war anti Irish song. And uh, it's much, much harder to listen to. And so Forrest is going to do the Irish anti-war version now. With your drums and guns and guns and drums, hurroo, hurroo. With your drums and guns and guns and drums, the enemy nearly slew ya. Oh, darling, dear, you look so queer. Johnny, I hardly knew ya. Where are the eyes that look so mild? Hurroo, hurroo. Where are the eyes that look so mild? Hurroo, hurroo. Where are the eyes that look so mild when my poor heart you first beguiled? Why did you run from me and the child? Johnny, I hardly knew ya. Where are the legs with which you run? Haru, Haru. Where are the legs with which you run? Haru, Haru. Where are the legs with which you run when first you went to carry a gun? Indeed, your dancing days are done. Johnny, I hardly knew ya. You haven't an arm, you haven't a leg. Haru, you haven't an arm, you haven't a leg. Haru, Haru, you haven't an arm, you haven't a leg. You're an armless bone, this chickenless egg. You'll have to be left with a bone to beg. Johnny, I hardly knew ya. 
with your drums and guns and guns and drums. With your drums and guns and guns and drums, haroo, haroo. With your drums and guns and guns and drums, the enemy nearly slew ya. Oh, darling dear, you look so queer. Tell me I hardly know ya. I'm happy for to see ya, haroo, haroo. I'm happy for to see ya home, haroo. They're rolling out the guns again, Peru, Peru. They're rolling out the guns again, Peru, Peru. They're rolling out the guns again, but they never will take my sons again. They'll never take my sons again, Johnny, I swear it to ya. With your drums and guns and guns and drums, Peru. With your drums and guns and guns and drums, hurrah, hurrah. With your drums and guns and guns and drums, the enemy never slew ya. I invite you to stand if you're comfortably able and join me in our words for mission. We will sing uh, the Sending Forth song, and then after that, I invite you to sit back down and uh, listen to Nadine and Walt uh, share their gifts again. Please join me in words for mission. Time has now come for us to leave this sacred place. As we do, may we challenge or may we embrace the challenges of our lives and our world. These are the times. We are the people. All of creation is blessed. May we love all and serve all. God be with you. And also with you. Amen.